Welcome back to science class everyone. This week we're going to be talking about properties of minerals. Hopefully you've already watched um, the video and done the lab activities um, before you get to this part. This should be toward the end of the week. All right, let's get going. Okay, so grab your notebook or any old piece of paper that you have laying around. Um, we're going to do Cornell notes, but with a little addition, we're going to add um, a Venn diagram here, and we're going to compare rocks and minerals when we start. And then after we get done with that, it's just going to be kind of like classic Cornell notes. Um, so again, the final elements you'll have are the title, the EQ, the page number, the body of your notes. You're going to annotate the side afterward, and then the summary is going to be the last thing. But for right now, you can make it look like what we got going on here at the right. Um, so write properties of minerals, put your page number, whatever you're at, um, leave a space for your EQ, and then set up a Venn diagram like that with some space to write about rocks and minerals. Okay, our title is Property of Properties of Minerals. And what we're going to learn about today is the difference between a rock and a mineral, which if you've done all the activities, you should start having an idea about that now. Um, and we're going to look at the ways different minerals are identified, those tests that we use, and what are some common uses for minerals. Okay, so we're going to start in the middle of our Venn diagram right there. So you're going to be writing this in the middle section. We're going to look at what's the same about rocks and minerals. Well, they're inorganic compounds, which means they're non-living. Don't try to write anything down yet, just wait. Okay, wait till the end. And then pause. Um, both can be classified by their chemical composition. Um, they're solid, they're formed naturally, and you find them in a lot of the same places on the earth. So go ahead and hit pause and copy these things down in the middle section of your Venn diagram. And if you didn't do the title in EQ, rewind back and do the title in EQ. All right, now we're going to look at the left-hand side, and we're going to talk about rocks. Um, they're most commonly classified about how they form. This might sound familiar to you, the three main types of rocks, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Next week, we're going to talk about the rock cycle. Um, so that's, But they're classified by how they're made, how they, they form. They're composed of minerals. So rocks are actually made of minerals, more than one mineral. And there's no definite chemical composition. That means I can't say like, oh, it's got six atoms of carbon and 12 atoms of silicon and three atoms of oxygen. Like, I can't say that. Rocks, um, they don't have a perfect recipe, even the same kind of rock. Like if I take two pieces of granite, one could have one composition of atoms and another one could have a slightly different composition of atoms and we'd still call them granite. Um, and there's no definite crystal structure, which will hopefully make more sense in a minute. So go ahead and pause, 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 copy that down. Okay, let's go on the right hand side. What makes minerals minerals? What makes them different from rocks? Um, so, you know, they're still inorganic, meaning they've never been living. They're solid. They're naturally formed just like rocks. Um, but how minerals are different is that they have a definite chemical composition, the amounts of elements present. For example, salt. Salt is a mineral. And salt has one atom of sodium and one for every atom of chlorine. And it's like that all the way through. Um, it's got a definite crystal structure. That means the atoms are arranged in a particular way, like a crystalline structure, and you tend to see these little, you know, corners forming on them, which we'll talk more about later. So go ahead and pause and copy those things down. All right, so now just thinking about that, I want you to look at these six samples here and see if you can tell which ones are rocks and which ones are minerals. Think about it, think about it. Okay, so uh, remember minerals have that definite crystalline structure. So look and see which ones look more like crystals. And then they're also, um, you know, they have a, like a definite recipe and they're not like a mixture of things. So which ones look like they're made of one thing instead of like a mixture of things. All right, well, the minerals, this is actually a rock because you can see it's like several things kind of mixed together, no crystalline structure. 
This is a mineral. It's actually a couple kinds of minerals stuck together. But we can see that crystalline structure. Um, this is a rock. Again, it looks like a mix. This is a mineral. So it's kind of a funky crystalline structure, but we can see those sharp edges there. This is also a mineral. And this is a rock. So if you guessed B, E, D for minerals, you guessed correctly. If you didn't, don't worry about it. Maybe geology is a, not the career for you, though. I don't know. Um, okay, so how do we figure out what a mineral is? So there's some important vocabulary, and if you did the uh, lab station activity, you got to play around with this. So the way we identify them is by color, streak, luster, hardness, density, and breakage points. Those are different ways we can identify them. So now we're going to do more like kind of classic Cornell notes. So um, you might need to turn the page or go to a different page um, because if you're like me, the Venn diagram took up a lot of space. So you can go ahead and switch over, you know, turn the page or whatever, but still set it up with the column on the left hand side. And now we're going to take just some kind of like classic Cornell notes. All right. Color is the first category. Um, many minerals have distinct colors, but they can also come in a variety of hues. And color is kind of deceptive. It shouldn't be the only test because like here we have gold up here and then we have fool's gold down here and they're the same color, but one is worth a bunch of money and one is not. Um, so it's not the best test. Go ahead and hit pause and just write down color. All right, next up is streak. Uh, it's the color the mineral displays in a finely powdered form. And the way we get that fine powder is by um, scratching it against a piece of unglazed porcelain known as a streak plate, and then you see what's left behind. And the weird thing about streak is sometimes you get a color that's totally different. Like we got this pink mineral over here and it leaves a white streak. Uh, we have this gold colored one here and it leaves a black streak. Um, so streaks can be actually uh, better than just looking at the color itself. So go ahead and hit pause and write down streak and the definition of streak. All right, next up is luster, shininess. It's the way a mineral surface reflects the light. And there's two main types of luster. There's metallic, which means it's shiny like metal, and there's non-metallic. And there's a bunch of kinds of non-metallic luster. It can be glassy, like number one over there, quartz. It can be pearly, like number two over there, talc. It can be greasy, like graphite. That's that stuff that's in um, pencils. It's not lead in your pencil, it's graphite. Uh, it can be kind of silky, like gypsum, number four. It can be resinous, like sulfur, number five over there. Or it can be adamantine, like diamond over there. That's what a raw diamond looks like when it's not all um, polished and shined up and cut and stuff. So go ahead and hit pause and write down the definition of luster and the two types. All right, next up is hardness. Hardness is one of the most reliable ways to identify a mineral. And you're basically scratching something against the mineral or scratching the mineral against something else and figuring out who does the scratching and who gets scratched. And by playing around with that, you can find where it lies on the scale of hardness. And we know the common hardnesses of many different minerals. Uh, diamond, like there's actually, you can buy like saws that have uh, ground up diamonds on the blade of the saw to make the saw like really, really sharp and can cut like kind of anything. So diamond is like the, the hardest thing out there and talc, the stuff that's in makeup and used to be in baby powder is, um, and in some forms of baby powder still, um, it's it's like the softest. It just crumbles when you touch it. So uh, hardness compares the resistance of a mineral to being scratched, and then it has these 10 reference materials over here. Um, it's called the Mohs Hardness Scale, and it's named after a guy named Mohs. Imagine that. Uh, Friedrich Mohs, and he's a German mineralogist, and he made the scale, so we named it after him. So go ahead and hit pause and copy that down. All right, next up is density. Uh, density is kind of like the heaviness of it, okay? Like if you um, pick up a rock, 
it's dense. It's heavy for its size. If you pick up a piece of styrofoam, it is not heavy for its size. So that's pretty much what it is, heavy for its size. It's the amount of uh, matter per unit of volume. And the way you find density is you take its mass, which is kind of like its weight, and you divide it by its volume. Um, and so you can weigh it and test the volume and come up with the density, and then you can kind of look at a chart here and see like, oh, I'm not sure what this is, but it's got a density of this, so maybe it's this. Um, so in minerals, the term used is called specific gravity in, de in um, describing density. So that's on that little chart, if you can see all these little SGs, it's talking about specific gravity, which is density, basically. All right, so go ahead and hit pause and copy down density. All right, next up is cleavage. Cleavage refers to the way that some minerals break along certain lines. Um, yeah, so it's just basically how they break. So you can see like muscovite right here has one plane of cleavage. So it breaks in one direction. Uh, feldspar has um, two planes of cleavage. So it breaks going up and down, it breaks going side to side. And then um, we get feldspar has many, many, or sorry, halite, salt, has, a, has several, three planes of cleavage. And then calcite down here has uh, three planes of cleavage, but they're at like angles. So you can look at the way they break and they don't break by accident. Um, they break determining like, you know, how their chemical structure is. So go ahead and hit pause and write that down. Oh my goodness, come on, go, go. Next slide, there we go. Okay, fracture. Fracture describes the way a mineral tends to break. So if it has cleavage, it's got that really nice way of breaking with all those like pretty planes. Um, fracture is a little bit different. And I'll show you some examples in a second here. I don't know why it goes in this order. All right, so conchoidal, so it's got like, it can break in curves, it can break hackly, so it's got sharp, jagged edges, it can be kind of an uneven break, rough and irregular, or it can be fibrous, where it actually looks like little fibers. Um, so these are different ways it can break outside of cleavage. Let's go ahead and hit pause and put fracture down. All right, so what are these things used for? Like, why should we care about them? Um, bauxite is the mineral that we can like run a little electricity through and we can get aluminum out of it. And that's handy because we use that for like cans and foil and plain parts. Um, calcite is in your toothpaste. Copper is in electrical wire. The Statue of Liberty is made of copper, pennies. Uh, diamonds are a girl's best friend. And also, like I said before, they can be used on um, the tips of saws and things like that. Graphite is in your pencil, and it can also be used as a lubricant. Uh, gypsum is a, a lot of times in your walls. Halite is salt. Quartz is in a lot of electronics. Uh, silver is in jewelry. It's used in photography and electrical equipment. Uh, sulfur kills um, bacteria and fungus, and it's also used as a fertilizer. And talc is found in baby powder and makeup. So these minerals are all around us. And gemstones, um, they can be used, shined up and cut um, and used in jewelry, like all over the world and for a lot of years in different cultures, um, they're made into jewelry. A uh, fun one is, you know, like your birthstone. So I've, my, for me, my birthday's in January and so garnet is my birthstone. So what's your birthday gemstone? All right. So now it's time to revisit those notes. Remember, if you want full points on the assignment, you need to do this part. So you should have the title, the EQ, the body of notes, along with that um, Venn diagram. So take a look at everything, reread everything, underline or highlight anything important that jumps out to you. And in the left-hand side, put any lingering questions that you have, um, main ideas that pop out, vocabulary words. Um, you should have at least three. For example, your first one up top next to your Venn diagram is probably the difference between a rock and a mineral, you know. That's what I would put if it was me. All right, and last but not least, the summary. So go ahead and hit pause and use this to fill out um, your summary. You're going to say what the difference between a rock and mineral is. 
Uh, you're going to say how minerals can be identified by, hint, hint, they can be identified by their properties. Um, some examples are, so give me at least three of those properties we can use to identify them. And then minerals have many uses, including, so put two or three that you found interesting, and you can rewind back in the video to see that, because we didn't really write them down in your notes. Like maybe you like the way they're used in jewelry, or that talc is used in makeup, or um, I'm obviously very girly because I said those two things. So whatever you found interesting about minerals and their uses, um, list two or three uses that are cool to you. All right, I hope you enjoyed science class. I will see you next week, or I won't see you, haha. <laughs> Uh, you can listen to me next week and uh, make faces at the screen because I can't see you. And uh, we'll talk about the rock cycle. All right. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Um, see you next week.